The New York Islanders and Pittsburgh Penguins are two of the more storied franchises in the NHL with a combined nine Stanley Cup championships. But before either of these two teams is back in Stanley Cup contention, they have got a lot of work to do. So today we're going to do a little side-by-side -side comparison of each team's offseason, give them a letter grade, and let you know if we think either of these two teams will be in the NHL playoffs next season. Hey everybody, welcome into Clearing the Bench is your one-stop shop for hockey content. If you go ahead and hit your subscribe button right now, you'll be sure to be in on all of our future videos. Well, both of these teams' seasons ended in disappointment last year. The Islanders, the way they went out against Carolina, and the Penguins just couldn't muster up enough uh, to make it into the playoffs. Uh, when we look at their seasons as a whole, the Islanders, they're just kind of in no man's land. You know, they're just middle of the pack. Uh, last year, the Penguins were just the Sidney Crosby show. It seemed like he was just out there by himself a lot of nights. And if he didn't do all the scoring and all the dirty work, they were going to lose. So let's take a look at what each of these two teams did in the offseason to try to improve their chances of get back, getting back into Stanley Cup contention. Uh, the New York Islanders, status quo between the pipes with Ilya Sorokin and Varlamov. But they did sign Marcus Hoberg to a two-year deal. Over in Pittsburgh, um, Philip Lindbergh is out. He went back to play in Finland. Uh, Ludovic Weber is also out. He went back to play in the Swiss League. They did sign Alex Nedeljkovic to a two-year extension, and they also signed Philip Larson to a two-year two-way deal. When we look at the Islanders on the back end, Robert Bortuzzo is out via free agency. They did make a nice signing when they signed Mike Riley, who played for the Bruins last year. And they also bought in a little bit of depth with Dennis Chalowski, uh, who was drafted back in the day by the Detroit Red Wings. And over in Pittsburgh, they signed Matt Grelchik from the Boston Bruins. They also signed the other Sebastian Ajo, who had previously been a defenseman for these New York Islanders. And the Penguins signed him to a two-year deal. Uh, they also added some depth when they signed John St. Avani to a three-year two-way deal. Uh, let's look up front what the Islanders did. Signed Kyle McLean for three more years. They like him. He started to progress last year. He's starting to become an overall player's. I know he got in a fight, he started to score, so I'm sure the Islanders and their fans are very excited about Kyle McLean's future. They also signed Oliver Wallstrom to a one-year deal, and Simon Holstrom was also signed to a one-year deal. Their big signing, in my opinion, this entire offseason was when they signed Anthony Duclair, and they locked him up for four years. Uh, they added some depth also when they signed Maxim Simplikov to a one-year entry-level deal. And they signed Tabo Polkinen to a three-year entry-level contract. Uh, they signed Matt Catcomb for one year. They also signed Fred Karlstrom to one, uh, for one year. Again, adding depth to this lineup, and they're going to need it because two of their big pieces for what seems to be forever, Matt Martin and uh, Kyle, Cal Clutterbuck, I'm sorry, are both UFAs, and this deep into the offseason, I would have thought somebody would have jumped on them. They are 35 and 36 years old, um, but, you know, They've got so much experience, and I think for a playoff team, you know, you're not really looking for these guys to do much during the regular season. You would really uh, be counting on them to bring their wares to the playoffs where they could really shine. Uh, let's take a look at what um, the Penguins did up front. Head scratcher here traded for Kevin Hayes. You've already got a really, really old team. You've got 11 players on this roster who are 30 years or older. Um, when they traded for Kevin Hayes, I don't know. I just think maybe that's just a situation where they just needed to fill some roster space with some guys who have got some NHL experience because I can't think of another reason. You've got all these kids here 
uh, that you signed and you know, for some reason, you bring in a guy like Kevin Hayes, who, in my opinion's career has been on the downside for a couple of years now. Uh, then they traded Riley Smith to the New York Rangers. As a Ranger fan, I was happy to see that. Uh, they also traded Lucas Spengowski to the Tampa Bay Lightning for Bennett MacArthur. That's probably just going to be a depth deal. They signed Samuel Poulin to a two-year, two-way deal. They signed Tanner Howe to a three-year entry-level contract. If you don't know about Tanner Howe, you can get very excited about this kid. He could be the future captain of the Pittsburgh Penguins. He played in Regina, and he played for one year with Connor Bedard, and Bedard was the captain, I believe, at 17. And then when Bedard got drafted, Tanner Howe was named captain also at 17. And, you know, I think he had eight less goals without Bedard than he did with Bedard, but his assists were the exact same amount, and he had about 75, 77 points playing without Connor Bedard. I think he had about 85 points when he played with them. So, Tanner Howe, if you are a Penguins fan, you can get very excited about this kid. He is pesky. I did uh, a video about him. If you can go back and take a look, you can find it. Um, he is just a kid that I think is going to make a big name for himself in the NHL for a long time to come. They also signed another big name to an ELC when they signed Braden Yeager. Uh, the Penguins' future is going to be bright when all of these kids start to make it their way. Um, they signed Valtteri Pustin in to a two-year deal, and I think he's going to make the Penguins' roster this season. Um, they added some depth. They signed Corey Andr Androvsky, and I'm sorry, Andronovsky, and they signed him to a one-year, two-way deal. Radim Zahorov is out. He went to Switzerland. They signed Tristan Braz to a three-year, two-way deal. They also signed Jonathan Gruden to a two-year, two-way deal. They signed Blake Lazat, a center who had played for the Los Angeles Kings. I think this is a very, very good signing uh, for the Penguins. He kind of reminds me of Tanner Howe, and they bought him in for two years. And then they signed Anthony Beauvillier to a one-year deal. So when you look at both of these two teams off seasons, nothing splashy at all. And I hate to say it, kind of boring. So when I give these teams a grade, it's not going to be very high. When we look at what the Islanders have done, I'm just going to say it, boring. They didn't bring in any big names. They didn't make any big moves. I thought for sure Matt Barzell would have gotten moved this offseason. Maybe it'll still happen, but I thought he would have gotten moved and they would have just tried to go in a different direction. But so far, it hasn't happened. Uh, I think they are going to definitely struggle to make the playoffs, if at all. Um, and again, you know, they brought in a guy, Tommy Albaline, who played a long time for the New Jersey Devils. He's more of a stay-at-home, very, very effective defenseman uh, in his own zone. He was very strong. He made great breakout passes. They brought him in as an assistant coach, and I think he's going to really help some of the kids on their back end. When you look at it, you know, it's Noah Dobson, and that's pretty much about it back there. So when they brought in Tommy Albaline, I thought that was a really good move on the Islanders' part. Uh, when we look at them overall, I'm just going to say I'm giving them a D. Uh, again, didn't really make any big splashes. I thought for a team that came that close, they would have tried to take the next step forward. And again, in my opinion, they did not. So I'm going to give them a D in this offseason. And when we look at the Penguins, pretty much about the same, you know, didn't really do a whole lot. And I'm just going to say a D plus. And here's the reasons why. They signed a lot of prospects, but they didn't bring in any big names. I know they're hamstrung by all of these big guys and names that they've got with Latang and Carlson and Malkin. And, you know, for the NHL's sake and for the Penguins' fans' sake and certainly for the Penguins' sake, you got to hope those three guys wake up this year in a big way. They are so disappointing to watch last year. 
Uh, you know, we saw the, the own goal that Latang and Malkin had here at the mullet against the Coyotes. I mean, it was just ugly. It just looked like a beer league play. So, again, they're going to need those three guys to step it up big time this year if they're going to do anything. But as far as, uh, you know, the offseason goes, where are they going to get their scoring from besides uh, Crosby if Malkin doesn't do it? And when I look at them next year, I hate to say it, but they could finish seventh or even last in the Metro, especially if they don't get some more production out of those big name guys. So that's going to do it for the video today. Let me know what you think down in the comment section on what you think the Islanders or the Penguins did. Maybe you give them a letter grade. We can have a good back and forth conversation about it. If you could, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And as we always do here at Clearing the Benches, let them know you're out there.